If you're an Amazon seller that's wanting to level up your Amazon product photos, then you gotta keep watching this video because I'm about to be talking with David from Amazon Experts, and we're gonna be talking about the photos that every Amazon seller must have on their Amazon listing. So if you're wanting to build social proof, build trust, credibility, authority, separate your listing from all the other competitors, then you're gonna wanna take some notes for this video. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with me telling you who I am, and then I'll introduce you to David. So if you don't know me, my name is Ian Smith and I run an Amazon marketing agency called Evolve Media Agency. At EMA, we completely revamp Amazon listings and boost up conversion rates because we take really high quality product photos and product videos and then we will keyword optimize the entire listing to make sure that it's gonna rank high organically and convert very well when it comes to shoppers actually seeing your product photo infographics, the videos on your listing, and then we also build out Amazon storefront build out brand story sections, we run Amazon PPC ads, we run Google search ads, TikTok ads, and overall we do a lot of things that Amazon sellers need in order to stand out from the competition, boost up conversion rates, and scale their Amazon business. So if you want to book a free consulting call with me, then go to emaamz.com. All right, so now let's jump into the video and let me introduce you to David. What's up, David? Thanks for jumping on this video with me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. So tell us, what do you do over at Amazon Experts? So we're busy uh, doing all things Amazon, but uh, I want to talk to you today a little bit about some best practices for photo optimization. Okay, yeah, so. awesome. Well, yeah, let's jump right into it. Photo number one, what is the, what is the first strategy you want to share? Okay, so before we jump into strategies, let's just break down uh, the types of images we have. Okay. Um, so it, it, go, it goes, I guess you, you, everyone's going to agree the main image, hero image, that's, that's, the, that's where you start. That's the ABCs. Um, but then quickly, you're going to jump into some different types of photos like a lifestyle image, infographic image, my personal favorite, a brand image. We'll talk more about that later. Okay. But um, I figured we break down a couple of different types of images you would create within lifestyle. So we'll start off with my, my personal favorite for lifestyle, the natural setting you, you want it you have a product uh it's a, a bottle of water you want to put that bottle of water in a fridge you want to put that bottle of water in someone's hand when they're on a hike you want to you want to put it in a natural setting somewhere where you'll find the product all the time yeah. um I, I always say that the best way you can get that done is by actually doing a photo shoot and having a real model and a real on a real hike hold the real bottle of water but um some people don't want to do that on the first go around. So no, I 100%, that on Photoshop. Go ahead. I, I agree 100% with that. I am strongly against the whole Photoshop thing or the virtual mock-up 3D okay. render thing. I'm a huge fan and it's not that much money, but think about the shelf life of these photos. They're going to last you forever. And if you actually make that investment, they're most likely going to pay off because having real life images of somebody holding the water bottle in this case is going to set expectations as far as size. It's going to set expectations as far as uh, gender you're, and you're avatar. You're preaching to the choir here. You're preaching yeah. to the choir. <laughs> I know, line, just mostly for the for the viewers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, though, there's going to be people who will not spend the money on the photo shoot. What do they do? They're gonna yeah. they're gonna go to the next best option, which is the mock up uh, with Photoshop. Yeah, unfortunately. So, so either way, uh, let's you you can accomplish these lifestyle uh, settings in a real photo shoot or a mock up. So you can use them for both. So you don't have to feel that bad. Um, okay. But I guess the second one is going to be a lot of natural settings, the collage. So you're going to showcase the product. A lot of times you have the, a lot of people splitting it up into four different boxes, four different scenes. Um, you know, if, if it's a home product, you can show four different rooms in your home. Um, you, you can get nice. creative with it. And then yeah, I'm a huge fan. Well, yeah, real quick ahead. before we move on. So I actually call those the grid image and okay. I am fully on board with that one as well, because if you do lifestyle images and break them up as a grid, then it's kind of like you're putting more information for the shopper to review in one image instead of just having one image be that full, you know, take up that full EBC rectangle image if we're talking about that. So yeah, huge fan of the grid and uh, it's also really big on social media as well, but go ahead. <laughs> yes, and I agree with you. Um, I will add to that though, if you have a, a clean, clear picture, there's something about, you know, being able to zoom up on it. And, and let's say even if you have the real photo, um, 
it, it's nice to do a collage. I like to do both if you can, but there's something you're missing with the collage where it's almost like, yeah, you have four settings. You'll quickly glance over them. If there's, if there's something nice about the setting or if, if there's uh, a lot going on, sometimes you have more than one product in the image. It's not really going to stand out if you collage it. So if you grid it, so um, there's the benefit, there's definitely a benefit of just having the regular lifestyle photo, one photo, one setting. Um, so I, we, we like to do both. Well and, and one thing I do like to do a little strategy with the grid is let's say that you do like um, different zoom settings. So one is a more wide shot where you get more information, more settings, and let's say it's in the mountains, like you said. And then a close up, another shot in that grid is a very, very close up showing like the material. Let's say it's something soft like a sweater. So you're doing a super close up on just showing how soft that really is. So different like scale zooms for the different grid images, I think is, is pretty good for I, shoppers I to have see. Found, I have found a lot of success with that in the past so i haven't done it as much as i should have though now that you're uh, talking about it i'm, I'm probably going to revisit that sometime soon <laughs> <this> project awesome <laughs> um cool. okay so let's keep moving i have a i have a nice little list here so another lifestyle photo is going to be a before and after i love mm -hmm. the before and afters um you know my personal favorite was one time we did a before and after for uh, a product called a furniture slider so off the name, you might not know what that is. A uh, furniture slider is if you have a heavy 500 pound dresser, uh, let's say it's one of those old, oldie, uh, you know, mahogany design, expensive dressers, you don't want to ruin it. You don't want to, you can't replace it. So you need to move it, right? So you, you order these furniture sliders and you put them, you, it comes with like a jack, like a car jack, you jack one side of the furniture and then you put these, these little, uh, platforms with wheels underneath them under the furniture and mm -hmm. then you can easily push the furniture and it rolls it has wheels underneath it so yeah um so we did a before and after where you had uh, a guy trying to push a dresser and he's he's making such a such an angry face because it's hard and it's it's not something you can <laughs> yeah and it's black alone. and white make it black and white so it seems we like we made it black and white we actually <laughs> yeah. made the old one black and white so yeah yeah um and then we had a guy like just pushing the thing with one finger and like just hanging out, you know, and, yeah. um, and it, the product went, uh, wild, it, the, the sales increased nice. a lot. It, it worked. Yeah. Nice. So the before and after I, I'm a big fan of it. Definitely a great way to, to use lifestyle. Of course, the you natural know, setting and all that's great, but before and after has a clear differentiation. This is before you buy my product. This yeah. is after you buy my product. You know, I've sales seen right that there. similar seen that similar strategy done with competitor versus us you know they yes. say like this is what you get with a competing product gray black and white uh gray scale and then this is us so i wonder if you could combine a black and white and a competitor versus us photo into into one i never done that but but i i'm oh, looking for the just challenge. throwing out throwing out ideas right now <laughs> so go ahead what's the next what's the next photo um okay so the next one we're going to jump into some infographic types of images so mm -hmm. i think the, the one that th there's two that i think i've i've incorporated into every single project that i've done in the past hundreds of hundred listings I've, I've designed um so the first one is benefits every product has benefits every product has call out points you're definitely i mean i, I don't I, this is something that's used a lot the circles the, the zoom ups the lines um you take a product you take other angles of the product zoomed up angles of the products and you can showcase let's just say apparel's coming to mind right now so let's say you have uh cuffs that are that are rimmed you want to showcase if you take a picture of the of the cuffs zoomed up you want to showcase a zipper on a pant you showcase that it's an easy uh easy close zipper uh you want to showcase that it has five pockets you can showcase you can actually take a picture of the behind the uh, back pocket and then show the pockets it's a great way to call out all of the selling points of the product yeah in a clean easy way i like to call that benefits image the salesman that's your salesman photo <laughs> okay. Um, it, it's gonna like if you walk into a department store uh, and you have a guy that's gonna help you s choose what to wear and and what works and what matches your eyes and all that right all that BS. Um, you're gonna end up buying the product easier because imagine you didn't have that and you didn't know you didn't even find the product, uh, you didn't understand why the product is for you. So that's what that image is accomplishing for you. 
it's going to yeah, sell it. It for sounds it. like sounds like you could do the grid style image. So you've got you know an image broken up into nine sections or six sections. You got super close ups, and then you potentially you know put a little bit of text talking about why this close up, what they're supposed to be looking for in this close up, and explaining why did they include this close up, and that's the benefit. So people often talk more about features. They they make the mistake of talking more about features rather than the benefits. So how would you say is an easy way for somebody to make sure that they're actually talking about the benefit instead of the feature? Well, I so that's actually a really good question. And I actually, I'm a very big believer in nobody's a bigger expert on the product than the owner, than the manufacturer. It's important. I, I, I mean, people can, can make that mistake all the time, but I, I like to start from the beginning the right way. We're gonna come with a whole bunch of Amazon strategy, but every time we do, we make a, a listing, we need to get those benefits from the client. Um, mm. There's no better way to do that than to clearly understand and, and ask the question. We have a, a questionnaire, which is which is aimed at, at pulling out that information. We ask the right questions. I think that's really where it starts. But like I'm saying, from the beginning of the project, you gotta kind of go in with all your all your information, with that, you can't really leave anything up to chance. Um, that's how you have generic photos, and and that's probably why you hate. That probably you have a predisposition for um, not not wanting a, a fake photo. But I like to think that again, if if you're not gonna do the full photo shoot, you could still accomplish as close as you can get to the real photo shoot with graphic design with infographics. Obviously, the infographics is something that. You can't do with with a photo shoot, but well, and it sounds like what you were talking there for a second about pre planning, creating a shot list, and when you pre plan and create that shot list, you already have this list of benefits, features, and benefits, right? That you know you want to highlight. So you're like, okay, we know we we need to highlight all these, so that's going to kind of dictate your shot list that you need to get, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, we actually turn from that questionnaire, we turn those benefits into we take one benefit per image sometimes two if they're correlated um we don't want to put too much on an image so what you were saying before about taking the lifestyle and putting words in it every photo we're going to make has words always yeah main image yeah. no words right, that's against tos every other image you can have words on that um, yeah. I, I heard that it's potentially indexing on photos. I don't know if I believe that yet, but maybe Ooh. maybe that's happening. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. But yeah, one thing I, I do see it. a lot, a lot of people will have a lifestyle photo with zero copy in it. And I'm like, man, they're just wasting opportunity right there because every image should have sales copy in it. I believe I agree with that 100%. 100%. Okay. So we talked about benefits. Let's talk about the second most important. So it's dimensions because I'm going to say that every product could benefit from a dimension photo. You, I, I, I might think that you're going to tell me marry the dimensions of the lifestyle as well. You can do that. We usually don't. We usually just take a photo and make it all about the specs, all about the dimensions. It, don't just showcase the the width and length. Show, show, you know, showcase everything you can about it. Um, you know, and and um, materials and uh, anything that is in that world of dimensions. Uh, for apparel, you might want to do a size chart. Amazon size chart is infamously not good. And those are basically the two most important infographics. I would always try to incorporate those two types of photos in any project I do. Um, another well, one, regarding regarding the, the dimensions, what I really like to do with the dimension shot is also like a top down type of what's included shot. So you're setting those expectations of here is what all comes inside the box that you're going to get. And then here is the dimensions of, you know, your most important things that they probably need the dimensions for. That was that was the next on the list. And oh, I okay. did actually <laughs> I did actually once do uh, what's included and a dimension photo. Nice. I think the reason why I never did it besides for that one time is because it was a product that came with 26 different pieces and wow. the, the client was very insistent on having it all in one photo, not two. And, Jeez. um, and we, we, we really had to get, we worked maybe 10 revisions before we figured it out. We had to adjust the text to be smaller and, and more concise. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, dimensions and wording. You know, that's why also he wants dimension and the name of the product, like what it is uh, on the what's included photo. Uh, ever since that project, I've always said, no, no, let's keep it <laughs> separate. So maybe yeah. I have a little bit of uh, PTSD from that. But um, yeah, it sounds like it. But yeah, but that what's included, I love that. Um, it's not always necessary, I'm going to say. It, it, sometimes it's like really clear what's included. Sometimes yeah. you don't have a box. So as needed, you, you use that as you as you kind of, uh, you know, think it's fit. Um, after that, we have compatibility. So that's on my list. Probably the less the lesser of the of all the types. I, I find myself using that for electronic items and right. products that are complicated to understand. Yeah. Um, and then another one that goes into that category is how to use. Um, so another one that's for complicated products. I remember we once did a product that was a um, something that you had to install. I'm not remembering exactly what it was. Yeah. So something you so have to install. And either you can install it with a screw or with the 3M adhesive. So we basically made an image with like step by steps of a, of a cartoon doing it because we didn't have the photos um, doing each step of the setup. That's very, very important. Uh, sometimes how to use it is not installing it. Sometimes how to use it is like actually using the product. Um, you can get creative with it as well. What were you going to say? So shoppers are going to have a mental checklist. And if all these boxes are checked, the chances of them buying your product is very high. So you as a seller need to try to put yourself in the shopper's shoes and think up that mental checklist that they're going to have. And with your photos, check all those boxes. Another thing that, that you know we cover in this video, obviously we're talking about best practices for Amazon Photos, but you can take a lot of these little notes and things that we're talking about here and put them into a video. So having a little section in your video for what's included, dimensions, lifestyle, who this product is for, uh, who it's not for, compatibility, all that, how would it install it? Like all this can definitely be in a video. So keep that in mind. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Um, so we're almost at the end of the list here. Um, we talked about the how to use, the last one on my list is competitors, uh, competitor comparison chart. Now, mm -hmm. again, not always applicable, but in a case where it is very powerful because I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of, you know, showcasing who the competitor is. My favorite version of this was like when you make a silhouette of a, of a, yeah. a generic product. So you're not really calling anyone else out and saying they're bad. We're just, well, you can't, really, uh, yeah, well, you can't, but some people will oh. get creative with how to do that. Um, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, it could be against TOS. It could also be legal. <laughs> they yeah, they yeah, could yeah. get legal on you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> but it I, that doesn't stop people. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen all, all kinds. Um, yeah. Either way, um, when, if you can do something with a competitor's, uh, competitor comparison chart, um, it, it really will help elevate your product and show why you're better. Um, Maybe a, a, a super salesman, if I may, uh, really, really explains the value, um, the benefits, and maybe what you're missing out if you don't choose us. So very important, very, very powerful. Yeah, uh, agree this with is that. a list that I that I put together. There could be others, but at least in my recent, you know, let's call it 100 projects, uh, th this is definitely the most popular types of photos we've been putting together. Um, well, let me add one because you, I don't think you mentioned this one. And this one is actually one of our priority photos, which is okay. a social proof photo. So okay. showing people holding up the product or some kind of social proof, whether it's we were featured in this publication or we've got a million customers or we've we we're established in the 1800s or something like that some kind of social proof that gets credibility to your company you know i really like doing a grid style image of multiple people either wearing the product showing the product different um lifestyle but ugc user generated content in a grid style image those and are really that, big for trust builders credibility showing authority in your space yeah and with that let's move on to the brand image conversation okay <laughs> Um, so the brand image is, uh, I, so I, I didn't, I don't have social proof on my list. Um, we accomplished that through the brand image, but we okay. accomplished other things in the brand image as well. Uh, and I think you were mentioning to me, you didn't do brand image when we spoke earlier. And this could be because yeah. the things we're accomplishing are the same, I guess. But I, I also want to potentially highlight what I think is being accomplished with the brand image that you might be missing with the social proof. Maybe you're not missing it though. Let's see. We'll, we'll discuss it with the brand image. We're not going to put the product in it, uh, or most of the time we're not, um, because you shouldn't have to. You're sometimes we will. Sometimes we'll actually showcase if you have like a nice group shot of all your products, like your whole line. 
It's a great way. It's a great way to place to put it. You're showing yeah. them, Hey, cross promotion, right? You're showing them, Hey, look at what we do. This is the products we put. Sometimes if you have too big of a line, you can put one item for every group, but a typical brand image is going to be something that you'll see in the about us page of the website of a website, you know, of any brand. Yeah. So it's going to be some sort of a, of a setting image. So let's just say you're selling uh, a backpack and it's like a really young, uh, uh, you know, young backpack. Maybe it's a glitter backpack or something that's small and, and uh, maybe it's geared for the festival crowd. And you maybe maybe you have a whole line of festival items and water bottles and backpacks and all these things for for the festival goers. So you might want to just put if, if, the, if there's a clear festival vibe here, you might want to just put like a group of friends, you know, holding hands on their way to a festival with maybe like lights in the background and just come up with like a like two or three of the sentences from your about us page. Yeah. Um, if you don't have something specifically talking about what you guys are, are, are you know, your mission or something like that, or who you're making products for and say something like making products to come with you every step of the way, something cheesy, something, you know, that drives that, that whole message home that, that shows them, Hey, we're a real brand. Hey, we have other products. Uh, it gets yeah. that identity across. It gets every, I mean, the social proof is definitely something that when we're doing our intake, we're going to ask the client, Hey, do you have anything like that? And if we have that, we'll, we'll find a way to incorporate that. Uh, sometimes in the brand image, sometimes we'll put it somewhere else. But, um, so David, let me get yeah, your thoughts on this idea. So I love the, the brand image idea. I think it's great um, as an alternative, what you could potentially do. So with EBC images, you only have about five modules, I believe, depending on the product category, it could be seven, uh, but you, you have a certain amount of modules that you can take up. So one alternative to having a brand image is build out a brand story section. So with a brand story section, it's somewhat new. Basically you can have up to 19 sliders carousel cards and shoppers can you know basically swipe left and right to look through all your different cards you can link to your storefront you can highlight other products you can make them clickable link over to other other product pages um, you can just have images and stuff so if you put a brand story section together it should either be either above or below your EBC content depending on your product category that may just check that box of the brand and social proof and authority and credibility and all that kind of stuff without taking away from one of those precious spots in your A plus enhanced brand content section. What do you think? I, I like it. Like you said, it might not be available to everyone, every category. I'm going to tweak it and say I would do it on top. Uh, I think that a lot of people, mo everyone is going to look through the images. Uh, that That's, I'm going to say majority are image shoppers. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that it's been growing. Uh, definitely. I mean, I remember two years ago asking people EBC A plus, and they're like, what? What are you talking about? Uh, more and more people know about it. Oh, the stuff underneath. Yeah, sure. Um, there was a time when nobody knew yeah. about it. And there still know, right? is, there still is a lot of people who don't know to go to the EBC and go scroll down. Um, especially mobile. You know, the, the, ever since Amazon's reports show you how much mobile you have, it just begs the question of how much, like, we really need to cater to mobile. Uh, mm -hmm. I shop mobile. I, I don't shop on a computer. I used to shop on a computer, but I, I shop mobile um, on Amazon. So you have to you have to have all that in mind. I think mobile has less of a chance of getting to the EBC. Um, it also warps the way you see the EBC. I don't love it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say you put it there on the image. You, you want to, at least this is what I do. I, I want to dedicate one of your seven, or if you have more then for sure, you want to add it. But if you have seven images, you want to put one of them. If you have a video, you only have six. I still, I'm going to put the brand image. I'll let the client choose though. Sometimes I have clients who tell me I'm not including the brand image. I'll throw that in the EBC. But, um, but my, gotcha. my personal choice would be put it in there because if you do have that guy that's not going to find the EBC, um, you, you want him to see it. You want him to know and, and get that brand trust and that, you know, that identity clear. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, David, for dropping some knowledge on the best practices for Amazon product photos. If you want to learn more about David, just head over to AmazonExperts.com. That's his website. I believe, can they book a free call with you there or reach out to you, connect with you yep. on through the website? Yes, you can book a awesome. free call. Thank you awesome. so much, Dan. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you got some value from this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.